What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video by yours truly. We have Reverse 1999 in the spotlight for today's content. And I wanna give a huge shout out to the development team for sponsoring this video and enabling me to bring it to your awareness. They've got a half anniversary ongoing right now all the way into July 11th. A big window for anybody to come back and play in case you're concerned with time constraints. And there's a lot of incentives and rewards waiting on you as soon as you log in. I'm talking free 99, log in and just collect them. They've even got a free skin for Ann and Lee for the returning players. I know y'all were big fans of Ann and Lee, so that's a good incentive uh, for you guys. But regardless of whether you're a returning player or a new player of interest, they have something to offer you. They've made a lot of quality of life changes, which we'll briefly touch up on some of them. But overall, we're gonna be going over the three promotional characters in this video and explaining their kits from an analytical perspective, as well as showcasing how they're designed to be utilized in practice. So before we get into it, if you do end up being interested, don't forget to download Reverse 1999 with the link in the pinned comment from the comment section or the description box below. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so just to touch up on the incentives briefly, if you click up on this hanger right here, these are all the promotional skins that are ongoing right now during the event. You can collect them. We have a balloon party right here, which looks pretty cool. We've got Druvis the third. That looks quite elegant. We've even got Ann and Lee, and this one is completely free. Just log in and collect it. In fact, they'll probably just slap it in front of your face. Just log in, collect it, and it's yours. That's the Ghostbuster girl. I love her. They also have my boy A Knight. Got a new skin for him. Man, I love their artwork. It's so freaking beautiful. Look at the look at the gold essence just just ever so gently rubbing off his his fingers. It's nice. It's lovely. Anyways, we also have this guy right here. I forgot his name, but he's super cool. He always looks sleepy all the time. This is one hell of an outfit though. Looks really cool. Now, so they got all those skins right now. I love a game that prioritizes skins. I don't know why developers these days, they just forget that people do love skins. We will spend money for skins. Uh, anyways, we also got this. This is a free 10 pool. No questions asked. Just log in and click claimed and you get a free 10 pool. It's called Decatone. Uh, we also have a free login for the next 10 days. You will get 10 wishes. Again, like I told you, they've got a lot of stuff incentivizing people to come back and try out their game. Then to scroll to the right real quick, this bad boy right here with the heart, we have a seven day trip back. You get free currency, and this is the currency you utilize to make your limited banner wishes. Uh, we have the beginning of a new story. We have a fresh start where you get double, uh, yeah, double the resources for the materials you're gonna be utilizing to ascend characters. And then we have Rejoice at the reunion. You just claim it, get that for free. There's a lot of stuff. If you go to this event over here, they've got like 85 events ongoing right now. This is the main one right here, which by the way, they have a brand new side cube that's absolutely broken for the promotional character. They have gluttony. They have more wishes, more resources. They aren't stingy with their resources at all in reverse 1999. Uh, and then they've got a plethora of events with even more resources. Another gluttony right there. So you can max refine a weapon of your choice if you want to. Um, they've got light to the tavern, the three doors, echoes in the mountain, anecdote uttu flash gathering flowing in the wind and it even bring it back the thief of the remake cup which is actually insane right here the thief of the remake cup that was my favorite event they had the great jazzy music with the jazzy vibes and one of my favorite characters in the game so all of that is out right now like i said this half anniversary is kind of a big deal just log on and check it out man there's a lot of stuff to do now let's go ahead and get into the promotional characters all right so we're gonna go ahead and start off with our girl jew who also happens to be meta she's one of the strongest units in the game in fact she's the strongest unit in the game right now the reason i say one of is because she actually extends way into the future right now standard 1.6 banner she's the strongest but even when you go over into china into 1.8 and 1.9 three patches later she is still sitting up there with the best of the best with regards to the dps department so if you are concerned about value with this character in terms of performance you can put that away. She is going to perform without a shadow of a doubt, but I don't care about meta. What I care about is kit functionality, uh, the innovative and ingenuity qualities of the of the character's kit. And she is definitely gonna be my favorite character in Reverse 1999 now. Allow me to explain why. Not only is this character meta, right? 
But the way she works is, the more intoxicated she becomes, the more shots that she takes, the more DPS that she's going to do. Oh yes, my kind of character right there. <laughs> Seriously, she literally has a move, the attack incantation to be precise, called Bottoms Up. In fact, her entire kit revolves around getting <laughs> intoxicated. It's awesome. She deals follow-up attacks based off of how much liquor stacks that she has with her attack incantation. It is, it is too hilarious to me and honestly quite based. But her channeling incantation gives her a stack of cheers like salute or come by, right? And cheers is going to increase the minimum and maximum threshold of the liquor stacks you can receive in order to do follow-up attacks. So you want to have this cheers buff activated if you can when you're using her attack incantations. But the cool thing about the channel is that she gets tipsy, right? Enters tipsy for one round. What the heck does that do? What is she gonna do? Well, she's like the drunken master, except not martial arts. She's just drunken without the master. <laughs> Seriously though, what happens though is she is going to cast a free attack incantation, bottoms up, at rank one for completely free when she enters the tipsy state at the start of the next round. Now, this is what's important. You wanna make sure you have adequate liquor stacks because if you don't have liquor stacks, then you're not gonna be able to trigger your follow-up attacks as consistently or as effectively. The, the way that that operates is while in liquor status, randomly consume one to three stacks of liquor for a follow-up attack. So every stack of liquor you consume, that is a follow-up attack. If you consume three stacks of liquor, that is three follow-up attacks. It deals reality damage plus 60% for every stack consumed. Now let's go back over to Cheers. Cheers states that when casting bottoms up, increase the minimum and maximum number of liquors consumed by one stack. So what this means is, she can only consume between one and three stacks of liquor. So if it increases that threshold of the mid max, that means now she can consume a minimum of two stacks for two follow-ups or four stacks max for four follow-ups total. So there's a bit of an RNG mechanism in this character's kit, which actually usually ends up being much more enjoyable to play when they have those RNG factors. Those of you who play Honkai Star Rail, she's uh, similar to QQ, where you have to like pray that you get some good RNG on her follow-up attacks. So QQ mains would definitely appreciate her. Now, when it comes to her ultimate, we have uh, mass attack damage. Hits everybody out there on the field. It deals 350% reality damage, and if less than three enemies are present, it adds reality damage plus 100% for each missing enemy up to 200%. And with higher portrait refinements, these numbers will scale even higher. So she can essentially do 550% multiplier to one target, or if there's two targets, it's a 450% multiplier, and if there's three, it's a 350% multiplier. And again, those do scale with higher portraits. Now, what's interesting here is there's a bit of a, there's a bit of intricacies within the, uh, the ultimate. If holding six or more liquors before casting, meaning you have six stacks of liquor or higher, you're gonna spend six stacks to grant a penetration rate plus 100% of this ultimate damage. So that means you're gonna do true damage. That's that's really massive in terms of how much damage you can do. But on the other end, if you have less than six stacks of liquors, then you're going to gain six stacks and two stacks of cheers. Which one is better? Honestly, from my testing, it really just depends on what the, uh, the hand you're being dealt is looking like. If it looks like you're constantly having to cast channel mixed with the attack incantation, you might be low on some liquor stacks with an ultimate up. And if that's the case, it's kind of just one of those ults where it doesn't matter what the scenario is, you're going to gain benefit from that ultimate regardless on top of the DPS increase. I personally always try to set myself up though to where I have plenty of liquor stacks before I cast my ult so I can get that penetration plus 100%. Now, coming over here to her uh, insight one, two, and three, she has a really good insight one. When you enter battle, you automatically off rip, gain three stacks of liquor, which you will absolutely need. But then at the end of the round, you're gonna gain uh, additional stacks of liquor for every four different types of these statuses on your allies. These statuses meaning stats up, POS, counter, shield, channel, etc. So if you're running her with people on the team that do buff up your own party and put buffs on your party, that's gonna give her more stats. Uh, so I like her with Ann Ann Lee because Ann Ann Lee gives a two stat boost to the entire party. But characters that are putting buffs on your party are gonna be good synergies for her to gain those extra stacks for free. 
Now her insight two is just a nice little attack percent boost. And then her insight three is at the start of the round, if you're in liquor status, you get one effect from collection of buffs to sell for two rounds. So she actually helps get, uh, generate more stacks on herself with her insight three, which is actually really strong. These are the collection of buff stats down here. Damage taken reduction plus 20%, damage heal plus 20%, incantation plus 20%, and ultimate might plus 20%. So all of these are very good. She's got some damage increases, some survivability, and even some sustainability by being able to heal herself. The girl is an absolute monster in the DPS department, and she's also very fun to play. Now, in terms of her uh, psych cube, what should you build? Well, they have an event going right now. You just have to go and play the event where you can get the one I'm, re I'm wearing right now called Outside the City. Level 60, it's maxed out, it scales with crit rate, 16% base stat, and then it's amplification at level five. After the carrier launches a one target attack through an extra action, you get critical damage plus 5% stacking up to 10 times. That's a 50% crit damage bonus. Then they just say, you know what? Icing on the cake, here's another 12% crit rate, because why not? Now, with regards to her resonance to finish off her build analysis, Honestly, man, the game has a very nice quality where you can click on your resonance tree and you can choose quick load and the game will automatically load in a build for you. If you don't want to get all five head with this, you don't have to. But if you guys don't want to work that hard, or if, you, if you guys want a pretty nice build, I pretty much always try to go for the most crit rate as possible with a little crit damage, some damage bonus and a bit of survivability. Uh, you can screenshot this screen at, if you want to. This is at resonance 10. So and resonance 10 is generally the sweet spot. Uh, after that, it gets very expensive for like marginally increasing performance. But this is the, uh, the, the tree line that I ended up going for. Now, the next character I want to talk about is going to be a Yenisei. And Yenisei is actually going to be in the showcase with Ju. I'll be showing you how they function together. But this is literally a five star character, right? Usually it's six star characters that are up there with the meta and the charts of rankings. This girl is actually a notch under uh, the best and most broken sustainer in the game, the Tooth Fairy as a five star and it's because not only can she heal with her health incantation and quite massive and juicy heals as well the heal has sturdiness in it which reduces damage taken by 25 percent that's not all the other thing that's crazy about her is when she pops her ult she grants a shield so she heals and she gives the team shields which you're going to see in that showcase and then she grants immunity which is immune to stat down negative status and control status in these get days in the game there's a lot of mobs out there that are hitting you with pesky annoying stat down negative status and control statuses can't cast your freaking uh incantations because you got disarmed this girl is very solid for a freaking five star character it's actually insane uh now her insights when casting a rank two or rank three debuff uh which by the way her attack incantation at incantation two or incantation three ranked it it starts to cast a debuff which makes the enemy deal less damage so i'm telling you she's just a great sustainer but her insight one essentially allows you to gain a stack of flow which is going to grant her moxie that's the energy of this game in terms so you can cast your ultimate that's what moxie is in reverse for the newbies below you gain a stack of that just for casting a rank two or rank three debuff that's her insight one. Her insight two is she gets a healing bonus plus 10%. I haven't unlocked the insight three yet, but it's actually very valuable. Just cast a heal and she gets another stack of flow that gives you empower incantation. If you don't know what that means, it's going to pick one of the random abilities that are left on the screen and it's going to level it up to a free uh, level two or even level three. And level three, if you get a level three, that's really juicy. But she can battery herself. She can level up her incantations to cast more potent ones. Uh, in terms of how to build her, you slap this weapon beyond Wonderland on her and she's good to go. Uh, there's some other alternatives. I'll be able to, I'll be sure to uh, put them up here from Pridewind. They always have three different Psy Cubes recommendations. But if you have this one, it scales with HP. And when she uses a debuff, she, her healing rate increases. She even gets a little bit of crit there. It's a nice option for her and probably the best in slot. And finally, we have Getian, who is not out at this point in time. He will be dropping on the second half of the half anniversary, extending all the way to the July 11th date. But I do want to go over his kit comprehensively. I've done my due diligence and I want to make sure y'all have a good understanding with regards to how his kit's designed to function and what teams you can be putting them on. Now, Getian is actually going to be a monstrosity in the realms of reality-based team compositions. In fact, his kit is designed to work with reality-based 
uh, team compositions with the caveat of his portrait too, which we'll go over here in a bit. But basically, if we scroll all the way up here to the top on the Pride One website, we can take a look at his two incantations and his ultimate. Uh, his ultimate is called I Shall Walk, Exist, and Know. It's a mass debuff, which means it's gonna put the debuff on everybody on the field uh, on the enemy side. It creates something called a Prophecy Told, which is a buff for your party for three whole rounds. Three rounds is always nice. That means it's got great uptime. Uh, he gains Eureka plus three when he casts his ultimate. That's gonna be important. And he inflicts something called Shape of Bones on all enemies for three rounds. Shape of Bones is a debuff of Getian's kit that is the conduit for him dealing damage. That'll make sense in a bit. But essentially what Shape of Bones does is it reduces the reality defense of all the enemies that are inflicted with it by 15%. And then in addition to this, every time they are attacked, Getian's gonna deal 30% of his attack in Genesis damage, which is like true damage every single time they're attacked. It doesn't matter if you're doing extra actions, it'll do damage on top of that. So the more actions that the reality-based units are performing, the more this little 30% uh, chip damage is gonna end up stacking. Now, what does the Prophecy of Told do, which is the buff to your whole party? Uh, it's gonna give your whole party a 20% damage bonus, no questions asked, but if they're reality-based, they get an additional 20% damage bonus on top of that. So essentially, if you have a reality-based team, everyone's getting a 40% damage bonus with this prophecy of told. And then uh, the defensive shred from Shape of Bones getting put on everybody, this is a lot of damage being applied. So as you can see, you're gonna wanna be in uh, Getian's ultimate pretty much 24-7. Uh, it, being inside of his ultimate is going to be a massive uh, factor with regards to his kit bringing out the max value. Now, going on to the attack slash debuff incantation. It's only one target and he can deal 100% reality damage at incantation one and then it gets stronger at incantation three. What's important about the debuff? Well, if you're not using his ultimate, if you're not, if you don't have his ultimate up, then you can still inflict shape of bones on targets for two rounds with this bad boy right here. Uh, which again, it's going to reduce their defense by 15% and then allow you to deal chip damage with Genesis. Now, the reason this is actually important, why is Shape of Bones so important? It's the channeling incantation. This is where Shape of Bones comes into play. Basically, when you channel and use this incantation, he's going to enter something called Bone Reading Status. Plus, he gets Eureka plus two and more Eureka at higher uh, incantation levels. But what's Bone Reading Status do? When you channel Bone Reading Status, at the end of the round, Getian will consume two Eureka to cast an incantation called Admonition. What does that do? Well, it's a mass attack. It hits everyone on the field for 120 reality damage, and that is why Shape of Bones is so important. As long as they have Shape of Bones on them, Getian's gonna consume Eureka and cast an AOE reality-based damage attack called Admonition. So Shape of Bones on their head at all times is the most important thing for Getian to deal that damage at all times. Now, a nice little perk is going to be his inheritance. He enjoys critical rate plus 20% and critical damage plus 20% on his Admonition when you're inside of his ultimate. So as I told you, his ultimate's gonna be a very important factor for his kit to function, but get this, the inside one is actually quite broken. Not only does you get, do you get a 20% crit rate boost, a 20% crit damage boost to his admonition, which is a mass attack of reality-based damage. When you enter battle, so long as you have three reality-based uh, units on the field, Getian gets free three moxie, which means you only need two moxie now to fill up his ultimate, cast his ultimate. So that's another incentive to run reality-based teams, which again, I told y'all I wasn't lying to you. He's a, he's a monster for reality-based team. His Insight 2 is attack plus 5%, nice little attack buff. And then his Insight 3, which is also important, at the start of the round, he's gonna inflict Shape of Bones on a random enemy for two rounds. So no questions asked, just a free debuff on one random enemy. And then at the end of a round, if you're in Prophecy Told, he gets a free Eureka plus one. Now this is very important because you're gonna need these extra Eurekas uh, to be able to constantly cash admonition. One negative about um, Getian's kit, if you don't have sufficient Eureka stacks, he gets out of his channeling state. And if he's out of his channeling state, he can't cast admonition. You have to be in this channeling state to cast admonition, and you're only gonna be in it provided you have enough Eureka stacks to continue to cast. So he's got a very uh, kind of greedy kit with regards to keeping up those Eureka stacks so that he can always cast admonition. And then you also have to worry about maintaining shape of bones, which is equally as important. Uh, but 
I want to get into portrait two because it's pretty important. His portrait two says now trigger with two plus reality damage allies, which means he'll get the Moxie plus four right here, right? Moxie plus four, and you only need to have two versus the original three that you had to have. So this makes it a little bit more comfortable for you to put two reality damage uh, units into the party and like one mental or two mental if you're fighting a boss. So this makes it a little bit more comfortable for you to run Getian with not just full-blown reality-based team compositions. Then his uh, admonition during his ultimate gets an additional 10% crit rate and an additional 10% crit damage, which is very nice. Finally, is uh, Portrait 1 says, I shall walk, exist, and know, which is his ultimate, last an additional round. So it was three rounds. Now it's going to be four rounds, which is also huge for uptime. So I think these two are very strong. If you can pick up these two copies, your Getian is going to be locked and loaded. Uh, this is going to be the comprehensive part of Getian's kit. Now we can go ahead and get into the showcase for Ju and Yenisei. So... We have Ju, Yenisei, and Ann Ann Lee. That's going to be the team that I'll be utilizing. Um, I'm going to try my best to explain everything and how it works, which we already got a very nice hand here. With Ju, you want to try and open up with two channels, which we got two channels. We got lucky there. Uh, one, the two channels is going to enable her to merge them and get three Moxie off rip. But two, channel is actually the bread and butter of her kit. It's how you proc free attack incantation bottom up uh, damage ticks. And then they go into follow-up attacks. And then you get a stack of cheers and tipsy, which is really nice. So we're going to start by merging channel. Now we got three moxie given to our Jew. Very nice. Already about to have her ult up. Then we buff with Anna and Lee. And then we uh, come in there with that channel. So that's the channel. It's very, very important that you cast channel last. Because once she a cast channel, she can't act. You literally can't do anything. She gets drunk. <laughs> she gets tipsy. So you want to cast it as the you want to cast it as the last incantation. Notice she got liquor stacks. She got chairs, and she's tipsy. The other good thing about opening up with two uh, channels is that you get six stacks of liquor, setting you up very nicely for her ultimate. Because her ultimate, if you have six or higher stacks, then you're able to get a hundred percent penetration, true damage bonus, which is really nice. So at the next start of the round, she's going to cast her free attack incantation because she's tipsy. And we have a stack of cheers, which means at bare minimum, we're going to do two follow ups. That was it right there. We can do that one more time. All right, here we go. So free attack incantation right here at the start of the next round. Here it comes. This is it. Free attack. And then here's the follow ups. Unfortunately, we had a bad roll there. You can roll up to four follow up attacks, which means you'll consume three uh, liquor stacks to do four follow up attacks because we have a stack of cheers. Unfortunately, <laughs> we rolled the, the worst roll. All right, so we're going to go ahead. Oh, I know exactly what we're doing right here. We're going to avoid using the attack incantation right here because we're about to get our ult up on the next round. If we were to use this attack incantation, it would take away from her liquor stacks and put her below the six liquor stack threshold. Then we wouldn't be able to use the 100% penetration damage bonus for our ult. So there's going to be times you're going to have to like manage those liquor stacks to ensure that you're getting that 100% penetration damage bonus. Yeah, so we avoid using her on this round. We want to make sure our liquor stacks are looking nice and juicy. Good damage there, though. All right, so now we go into this uh, this next round with nine liquor stacks on Ju's head. Now we're going to pop our ultimate. But we also have Yenisei's ult up, which is going to cast a fat shield on our party. Yep, there's our shield. And now we uh, we end it off with the ultimate. Worry not. The direction of faith is decided. That's Yenisei's ult. Beautiful water animations. Everyone's got shields. Everyone's got immunity. So they can't be debuffed and they can't be dealt damage to, which is really nice. This is Ju's ultimate, by the way. You saw that big, juicy AoE damage. Let's go ahead and go back one more time. Okay, here we go. So, this is Ju's ult. <laughs> she spills the liquor and a horse comes through and runs it over, bro. This is a wild ultimate, but that's some that, that damage is nothing to scoff at. So we, we immediately defeated one of the foes. And look at those shields. Look at those shields from Yenisei. Beefy shields. 
taking no damage. And she can heal, guys, on top of the shields. That's a five-star sustainer. We get a free level three channel. That is so massive. That's nine stacks of liquor. And then that's two stacks of cheers, increasing our follow-up procs on our free attack incantations. Just a crazy, if you can get three level three channel, that is so massive for Ju. Uh, but yeah, we ended up using a heal. And one thing I like about uh, Yenisei is she can target who she wants to heal and then she'll heal again to the ally with the, the next lowest HP. So we cast our level two heal with Yenisei. Then we channel level three. Holy moly, that's massive. And then we reproc our buff with Ann Ann Lee. So see, she had a double heal there. Cheers, cheers, tipsy. Now we get another free attack incantation. Cheers is going to proc as well. And we just got buffs galore on our Jew. Look at all those buffs. So that's the attack. Follow up. Pop, pop. <laughs> really nice. We got bad rolls, though. You can follow up four times. Coming. All right, so we cast her ult. And then we cast a, a level two attack incantation. And she's got plenty of liquor stacks to do a massive follow-up attack damage as well. Unfortunately, I think her ult's so strong on this time around that we just completely obliterate. Boom, yep. 28,000, 20,000. So she defeated him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you run Ju and Yenisei. And that's gonna wrap up the content for today's video. Again, I hope I brought you guys some substantial insight with regards to this half anniversary. It is kind of a big deal. Don't forget, if you are interested, download the link down below in the description box or the pinned comment in the comment section. Again, huge shout out to Reverse1999 for sponsoring this video. Peace, love, and happiness. Catch you guys on the flip side.